Today is the day after my second dose of the Pfizer vaccine, and I actually feel okay so far. I had a little bit of a headache last night, but uh, I'm feeling all right. I hopefully don't come down with the chills or the fever, but regardless, I'm grateful to be able to uh, be vaccinated. So today I have the opportunity to talk to someone who is super involved in the Tesla community. The only thing is he lives in Austin. So I'm going to have to have a FaceTime interview, which I've never really done. So I have this iPad here and uh, I don't have time to go buy an iPad mount. So I'm gonna try and like rig something up real quick. So I have this thing here, which is for a phone, but it doesn't go doesn't go wide enough. The call is in about one hour, so I, I need to figure all this out. So today I'm going to be talking to somebody who is super awesome and the most charismatic person I've ever met and like super, super involved in the Tesla community. What's up, dude? Hey, hey man, how's What's it going? What's up, minimal duck? <laughs> okay, first of all, you, man, good to see you too, bro. I mean, I know I can't see you right now, but I will see you in this edit. So. Um, Hopefully, first of all, how do you say your name? Properly, it's pronounced Anwar Beck. So, so it's not it's, like a rolled R. It's not. It can I guess it can be. Uh, the way I've told people, like we pronounce this, uh, like A N W A R, Anwar. Yeah. Anwar Beck. Like the root of my name is Anwar, and then Beck is like used to be a surname back in the olden days Beck. in so, Kazakhstan. But can but I yeah. say? Can I say Anwar Beck? Or no? Sure. Like, like, <laughs> like. How, how would your cousin pronounce your name? Anwar Beck. Anwar Beck. Okay, Anwar Beck. Yes. How did you get involved in the Tesla community? Man, it's been, I think, like eight, nine years ago. Some of my very close friends, uh, Elon, hired personally as executives at Tesla. What were you so doing? Like what what my, were you doing back then? I was just like an oil and gas engineer, dude. Like you were oil. Wait, you were oil and gas? <laughs> <laughs> I worked for a company called Anadarko. I was running the Mozambique LNG project, liquid natural gas. It was actually like one of the largest oil and gas projects in the world. So my background is petroleum engineering, believe it or not. I went to UT. Uh, <laughs> work. That's yeah, crazy. After I worked in I know, after I worked in oil and gas for a while. How long is a while? How long were you in the oil and gas industry? 12 years. Wow. So I graduated uh, from UT in 2005. So since then, dude, uh, I worked from 2005 until uh, December of 17 is when I left oil and gas. That's amazing. And that's, that's right about the time that your buddy started working with Elon? No, no, no. That was early. Way oh. earlier than that. Oh, like, so you were still, well, you were still, still in the gas and oil. I was still. I had to keep my oil and gas, uh, my Tesla passion, like, hidden. Almost like the secret. But when I bought my first Model S, this is a true story. This is five, six years ago. When I drove to work at Anadarko, I had a, a co-worker flip me off. Oh, wow. He gave me the finger, dude. <laughs> it was not that widely accepted. Oh, my God. That's yeah. That's funny and also, like, incredibly rude. But also, <laughs> it's just they knew what the future was going to, you know, come yeah. to. So, wow, totally. dude. And so, I you were always in Texas? You were always based in Texas? Yeah. I'm originally oh. from Kazakhstan, but we right. moved uh, in the early 90s, like 92, 93. My dad was in the oil and gas industry, so we spent one year in Boston, kind of like learning English. I always have these like pinch me moments when I'm in the U.S. and like, you know, just I've got these like American friends. Where I grew up, like, United States was like going to the moon, dude. Like, honestly. 
That's yeah. incredible, man. So you were an investor in oil and gas. You came out. So I had like shares in my oil and gas company. That's where I initially I was like, dude, I'm not, I don't believe in this future anymore. So I kind of slowly started selling that stuff off and buying in the Tesla. Uh -huh. So I rode Tesla from like 20 something, 20 something dollars a share up to what it is today. And I'm still, I haven't like, and the other thing is I don't like, I don't sell this stuff, right? I'm just like right. holding it. You said your friend like started to work with Elon. What did he do? Yeah. Uh, Praveen was in charge of the growth team. Oh, okay. The director of growth at one point. I think where I got involved with a lot of these guys, some of the executives and stuff is I just like went to every single, back in those days, the unveil events, dude, there's like hardly any people there. This was like- How, how did you get back. to go to the unveil events? You know, the referral program, they used to have prizes where if you got X amount of referrals, there was a point like in the early days, I was like one of the top referrers like in the world. This is like, I think uh, Kim from like Tesla, Ben Solins, all these guys were like, back in those days, a referral was only a model S and X before it, the right. three counted. Right. Um, so yeah, so like I, I almost always I would max out whatever, you know, referrals that you could win. And usually a grand prize for maxing out your referrals was an invite to an unveil event. Speaking of referrals, did you get a Roadster? I've got two. Oh, it's yeah. in your account? Yep. Wow, so that means we can go drive it together. Of course, dude. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Back? I'm nervous. You should be. Zero to 60 you, so in 1.9? 1.9 seconds, sub two seconds we're saying. We, we may have run faster than that, but we're saying we're being conservative. Oh my God. Uh, so I've been testing the car and my neck was sore for about three or four days no last way. week. It's insane. I'm honestly a little bit nervous. You, you should be. Are you ready? <laughs> so I would rest your head against the headrest. You ready? Okay. Here we go in three, two, one. Oh my God! <laughs> Tell me about the first time you met Elon. Several years ago, Elon came to Austin for South by Southwest. At the time, I don't even live in Austin. My wife and I just came back from some trip uh, and we're in the Houston area. I used to live in the Woodlands. So she gets a ping on her phone saying, Elon is coming to South by Southwest. It was like, it was like very last minute. And she's super cool. So she's like, dude, do you want to go? And it's like three in the morning or something. We just are jet lagging from this trip we just got on. And I don't even let her finish the statement. I'm like, you're the best wife ever. I'm gonna go take a shower and we're gonna drive to Austin. It's like a three hour drive. Wow. So we go straight to this event, South by Southwest, and we got awesome tickets and whatever. And then I parked, my friends used to live at the Four Seasons in Austin. There's a hotel and a residence, right? So I kind of like helped the Four Seasons initially with the charging infrastructure and all this. So like, these are like my friends. So we, we left our car charging and parked at the Four Seasons. And as we're walking back from the event, my wife was just like, oh, I bet Elon is staying at the Four Seasons. And I'm like, dude, that'd be cool. And then as soon as I say that, swear to God, this is exactly what happened. I look to my left and Elon is on his phone in a Model X, like two feet away from me. I'm like, no way. <laughs> And it's a line of Teslas, it's like a caravan, and, I, and I'm like a block and a half from the Four Seasons, and I tell her, I'm like, dude, I actually haven't met Elon at that time yet, and I was like, if he turns right to go to the Four Seasons, I'll, I'll go up and say hi or something. So that's exactly what happened, this caravan turns into the Four Seasons, he parks next to my car, basically. So when I start to approach Elon, uh, his chief of staff at the time, Sam, was like, hey, hey, no photos, no photos, and I was like, hey, it's like, I'm the president or whatever of the Tesla Owners Club. And this guy's like, uh, Sam was like, prove it or something. Uh, like a year prior at the semi on Dale, uh, JB Strabo and I met. He's the co-founder of Tesla. JB and I got along really well. So there's photos of me and JB. Uh, the director of Iron Man, John Favreau was with us too. And I asked John Favreau, I was like, dude, Tony Stark is Elon Musk, right? And you know what he told me? He said that Robert Downey Jr. apparently like followed Elon around for a few weeks to get into character. So Elon Musk is Mr. Tony Stark or wow. Iron Man, dude. Wow. That's why he made a cameo in that movie. Like the, the, the character of like Tony Stark, this billionaire entrepreneur or whatever, that's all Elon. So long story short, those photos I had, so like, I was like freaking out a little bit. So, so then Sam goes and gets Elon. He like brings them and then my wife is just like super shy. She doesn't like to get in photos and stuff. So all of a sudden she disappears and I'm like, where'd she go? Cause I want to take a photo of Elon and like chat with him and stuff. 
and like I couldn't find her. She was just, she's just like very uh, she doesn't like attention and all these things, right? So Elon and I end up trying to like go find my wife. He's super cool, dude. Like he's like real generous with his time. Like chatted up, chatted us up for a little bit. And then the fo- I've got this photo. It's an epic photo with me, my wife, and Elon. Where Elon is just like laughing because him and his brother Kimball, they did a they did a they tried to do this skit uh, at South by Southwest, the Three Amigos, and it like didn't go very well. Like the crowd didn't get it. So I was like, I was almost like making fun of that. And he was just like being such a good sport about it. He was just like dying laughing. He's like, yeah, dude. What a good thing that works. I know it's terrible. <laughs> But after that, we like he gave me his contact info, so we interacted here and there. And then I think uh, there's a video out there somewhere. But a couple years ago at the Model Y unveil, I remember that I was I'm, there. I was were you? there. Okay. I'm standing in the front row. Yep. He, he came out. Um, there's a video where I'm like I scream out "Nice shoes," and he had those cool Tesla right. Nike Air Jordans or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I'm standing in front of him and. He, I think it was a part of the presentation where he's talking about supercharger expansion. To basically, yeah, yeah. To drive a Tesla from London to Beijing, and you know, to global supercharger expansion, and everybody's yelling out where they're from, and so I yell out Kazakhstan at the top of my lungs. Kazakhstan. <laughs> Actually, we we have like a, some great supporters in Kazakhstan. Probably, <laughs> we will build superchargers in Kazakhstan. Thank you. We had it right here. <laughs> so from that statement. I think within a couple of weeks, I was on a plane with his executives flying to Kazakhstan. We like met the prime minister of Kazakhstan and all these like, I, within six weeks, Tesla installed superchargers in two different cities in Kazakhstan. Wow. So the other like, the big idea that I pitched to the prime minister and the rest of the government had to do with the, the semis, right? Like one, a uh, few years ago when Elon introduced the semi trucks, he was talking about Basically, if you do platoon driving and FSD and autonomy comes into play, that it could be cheaper than the rail to transport goods with the semi trucks, whether a platoon like, you know, one driver, but several autonomous semis following the driver. So I kind of introduced that concept and, uh, you know, I told the prime minister of Kazakhstan, imagine a world if all the things, uh, the trade, from China going through Kazakhstan on our highways, and we work with Tesla in a partnership to basically electrify these roads, right? Electrify these highways. So spend the billions today on the infrastructure, make sure those roads ro- uh, roads can handle that traffic and the weight, but also electrify them with not only superchargers but mega chargers. So right. I think that like basically like those three things that I introduced, which is you know, uh, mining, supply chain in Kazakhstan, possibly Elon building a factory there. And the, like, uh, the way I worded it is I said, the Silk Route is back. So after we introduced those like big ideas for the prime minister, he, I think he became almost like a super fan of Elon's. I heard from some, some people close to the prime minister that he read Elon's book and wanted to meet Elon, tour the factory and, and drive a Tesla. Mm-hmm. That was like, like legit, this dude wanted to drive a ludicrous Tesla. These are the, 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 the email that I got from these guys saying, hey, it'd be cool if you could set this up. So I reached out to Elon's chief of staff and explained the situation being like, I don't think this is something that happens normally, you know, and I'm sure Elon isn't down, you know, doesn't like meeting politicians and all this, but I explained the big picture of like, hey, you know, there's mining potential there for Tesla one day and the supercharging and all that kind of stuff. So basically, long story short, it wasn't just a prime minister that came. The prime minister brought like every one of his direct reports. <laughs> like every minister, the ambassador to Kazakhstan from the US or from, yeah, like everybody came, dude, it was so crazy. Wow. Uh, the, the trip was an official trip. I flew out there. I was shocked to see an entourage, like this, the United States Secret Service was there escorting <laughs> the entire government of Kazakhstan, basically. Wow. Um, and it, it was even to the point where the Secret Service felt uncomfortable with the prime minister driving the Tesla, so they had to cut that out. Tesla spent all this time, dude, setting up like a, a private area for the prime minister to drive a car and all wow. this. They scrapped that the day of because they're like, dude, we don't need this guy killing himself on U.S. soil. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, dude, it was, it was wild. And then what's crazy is uh, I had another run-in with Elon shortly after that. We did a Tesla Owners Club Leadership Summit and we had a chance to like 
Would, were you at that one by any chance? No, I, I, so I'm not a, I'm not like a, an officer in any club. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so we had a, we had a Tesla owners club meeting, and basically like Elon surprised us and came and uh, and like met with some of the presidents. Yeah. We had like a kind of a private. He talked a lot about Cybertruck and all this type of stuff. I think it's probably okay to talk about it now, but at the time we like had to sign NDAs and all this stuff. But basically, like, on the way out, he's like, dude, you're the Kazakhstan guy, right? I was like, yeah, he's like, come give me an update about how all that's going. Uh, my business partner, Matt Home, the, the best realtor in Austin, he's, he's the president of the Austin Tesla Owners Club. He told me this afterwards because he saw this interaction going down because there's a glass wall between, like, the Tesla Owners Club leadership people and then me and Elon. And I, I guess Matt always tells me I have an issue like getting when I get excited about something I like don't know distance I'm very like <laughs> in people's face or whatever. Dude, you're so charismatic AF. After, yeah. Matt tells me this after he's like, bro, he's like, you are like hugging up on Elon. Yeah, like, I like totally arms see that. I totally his see arm. that. I thought I thought we were speaking quietly because we're talking a little bit of like confidential stuff about this mining or whatever. And Matt was like, bro, like I should have taken a picture. You were like, like embracing Elon. I was like, oh God. I was just like <laughs> so nervous. I like wasn't even like I probably didn't understand where my arms were or what I was doing. But crazy times. Crazy times. Speaking of crazy times, it's it's almost 420. What what's the deal with 420? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this, because because you're you're trying to start like some type of movement. It seems like, dude, and, dude it's already and started, I'm bro. Totally on board. April twentieth is Elon Musk Day. Hashtag Elon Musk Day. This started very genuine and on accident. Uh, you, you know who Ross Gerber is, right? He's like a yeah. big investor in Tesla. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. last year, uh, Ross was gonna basically uh, invite a bunch. He invited me and a bunch of our friends, like Safian. Uh, Omar, like a bunch of the K10 crew, uh, K10, all the, the third row crew, a bunch of big investors in Tesla. He was going to, I think it was set for uh, April 20th of 2020. Right. Yeah, he was going to do uh, like a blowout party to yeah. celebrate. Oh, yeah. No, I, I remember that. I saw the invites going out. I wasn't invited. You did? But, okay. But, but yeah, so, I, I remember hoping so or wishing so that I would get invited. So COVID hits and we end up, Safi and I think helped organize this. We had a Zoom call instead, mm. like a few weeks before 420, sometime in March. I, I had this like soliloquy about like in 50 years, you know, one day we're all going to celebrate an Elon Musk day. And I feel like people like Elon, dude, these people that just like do these amazing things for humanity. We never celebrate them when they're alive. I know. Yeah, you it's know? crazy. It's always posts. Like when they're not here anymore, we're like, man, remember that guy that changed the world? So because of that, last year on 420, 2020, I felt, I felt like the numbers lined up really nicely. I basically like called the action to all my friends. All, you were involved in that too. Like yep, a bunch yeah. of us, like we basically were like a grassroots movement online mainly on Twitter, a bunch of our YouTube friends made videos and stuff. But we were like, dude, let's celebrate Elon Musk Day. Let's celebrate this dude and what he's doing for for humanity, for us individually, today and not 50 years from now. So we basically, the community decided that 420, uh, April 20th, every year is gonna be Elon Musk Day. So that's how it started. It was like this very like, it wasn't anything to do with Tesla. Elon had no idea right. about it. Uh, I did reach out to, uh, I think, May and Kimball at the time just to like, let them know. Mm-hmm. But Elon replied at the end of the day on Twitter being like, thanks, dude. Like, I think he did on so much by just media and these fudsters and Tesla Q that like, it's important for people that realize what he's doing to celebrate him and his efforts, you know? Yeah. But, Well, Anwar, thank you so much for joining me on this vlog. Um, I feel like I'm coming up with a fever right now, so... How could people find out more about you? You can follow my crazy shenanigans on Instagram under Super Tesla Geeks. And I'm pretty active on Twitter as well under Anwar Beck Iman or at Anwar Beck Iman. And also, if any of your viewers I'm thinking about moving to Austin. My business partner and I, Matt Home, who's one of the top realtors in Austin, we, uh, we're we helping Tesla with a lot of their reloads and stuff, so definitely hit me up. Uh, you can look us up on our uh, homepage, Home Team Austin, 
home is spelled H-O-L-M. So yeah, if you guys want to run around in Teslas and check out real estate in Austin, definitely hit us up. Definitely, man. Well, dude, I, I really, I really appreciate it. And again, like, thanks so much. Uh, I can't wait to I can't wait to come there and, and see you in person. I just got my second dose of the Pfizer vaccine, so it'll be soon, man. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Sorry about that. I, <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> see you guys later.